Um, yeah, I just wonder what it was that literally attracted you to getting involved uh, in this project and this character. Oh yeah, you know, I was such a big fan of the girlfriend experience, truly. And um, Steven Soderbergh obviously is a prolific director. And what I liked about season three is that it's really a story about a woman who's a scientist. Um, and so she sees every aspect of her life as an opportunity to acquire data. Um, and so it's not really uh, like the other girlfriends, they all have sort of their different motivations. Her motivation is to sort of merge human desire and tech. And I thought that that was such a unique future facing story. Yeah, I mean, there were so many kind of different personalities with Iris. Like, did it almost feel like you were playing a, a multitude of characters? You know, I think that something universal that we all do is present different personas with different people. And we sometimes give people what we think that they want. And so I think that Iris is doing that um, to an extreme, obviously. Um, but she is keenly aware that people are doing that in reaction to her as well. So she's kind of playing all of these, you know, psychological mind games in order to figure out what's behind, um, what people's intentions are, as opposed to what they say they are, and um, to translate that. So it did, it, it also kind of felt like her, just presenting different selves. Yeah, I mean, Iris is sort of fascinated, isn't she, with like human behaviour and understanding the way people work and tick. Um, I just wondered if it's a fact, something that you share and if you think that your job in some way facilitates that. Because I guess as an, as an actor, you're constantly trying to understand people and get into the heads of, of different people from different walks of life. That's a really interesting thing to say. Yeah, I think... I was definitely fascinated with the story and being able to research the character was a huge element, but um, something else that really drew me to it is that we had all of these amazing consultants. We had somebody named Simon Stringer, who is a um, man who runs a brain lab in Oxford in the UK. And he taught me a lot about sort of the human brain and what we're discovering and how, um, that is being sort of translated into tech. And then I got to speak to somebody who has a day job in one field and then is a sex worker as a girlfriend at night. Um, and I got to learn a lot about her and um, sort of what drove her into both of her professions. And so I think like that was really the most interesting part of being able to act in this was just meeting people. Yeah, did you meet many um, women working in the sex industry to help sort of better understand that, that world? Um, I met just one, but we became quite close. And um, I really found that we had a lot in common. And I was so grateful to her for sharing sort of very personal things with me. And I thought that um, I, this would have been impossible to do without her as a consultant. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't just that world, I guess, you had to uh, understand better. I guess the London scene is also a huge part in this. Did you have to really kind of brush on your techn technology kind of knowledge and kind of really delve into, into that side of the story too? Yeah, you know, I was really interested in what a, a young startup um, feels like, both socially and professionally for... Um, somebody like Iris and I read a couple books about um, different kinds of people and how they were treated in new startups and what they learned. And um, I definitely brought that to the experience. And then with the tech, it was Anya, the showrunner was incredibly prepared and well-versed in you know, all of these different um, facets of technology that we were talking about. So she really helped me a lot. So how was your time in London? Because um, I know I know the weather's usually a bit crap and our food isn't amazing, but did you, did you have fun with that? <laughs> Classic self-deprecating, yeah. No, I, I loved it. I really had never been to London before um, I shot and I was just obsessed with London. I want to move to London. I'm all about London. I'm constantly like, I'm home now and I'm just ordering stuff on the internet from London so I can feel like I'm in London. It's, yeah. 
I was going to ask too, I mean, you mentioned Anya, and she does a fantastic job, and I was lucky enough to interview her yesterday. And I can just tell so much thought and kind of uh, meticulous kind of um, ideas went into the crafting of this, this show. She must have been a great collaborator. Yeah, she was, um, she's really an amazing filmmaker and she's also really receptive to ideas from actors and um she's she doesn't really have an ego about anything you can sort of question anything and she'll give you an answer or she'll say i don't know how do we fix it um and what really struck me about her is obviously she had to know so much about tech and ai to um, create the show but the sort of deeply personal scenes where the character is connecting with her father or they're emotional or whatever were just as well written and just as thought out so that was really exciting for me because yeah, it's, it's an incredibly ambitious show and it's so high concept the visuals are so striking did you get a sense for how it would kind of look when you were on set or was that something that you've only really been able to tell from watching it back you know Anya worked with a DP named um Zach who worked with her on her first feature, which was a movie called She's Lost Control. And I had seen that and loved the visuals and knew that this was gonna be similar. Um, but they had such a shorthand that I always felt really safe with the shots that we were doing. And I, I got to see a little bit on the monitor, but I just think you know their eye for lighting and um, mood was just so incredible that I, I wasn't surprised at how beautiful the show looks. And of course, you mentioned uh, Stephen Soderbergh at the beginning. Um, Anya was saying yesterday that he was actually always, even though he's an executive producer role, he was always on hand to kind of take calls and kind of speak about stuff. I just wondered if you had much dialogue with Stephen. So. Oh, yeah, he was so amazing. You know, um, he didn't have to do any of this, but he was so above and beyond. He took me to breakfast when I signed on to the show. And, you know, we talked a bunch and then he gave me his number and I was texting him you know, questions or whatever. He was just very uh, reassuring, sort of sending me like happy gifts of like animals dancing when he'd heard that we'd had a good day on set. So he was very um, supportive of all of us. And obviously I'm such a fan of his, so that was really cool. Oh, I mean, like, so um, I just wondered if you watched the previous series to kind of help oh. understand the tone and stuff for this for this new series, or 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 if it was because it's so like unique. If you've if sorry, it was... Zoom is hard sometimes. Okay. I'm <laughs> getting tripped up. Um, yeah, I was such a big fan of the previous uh, seasons, and I would have signed on to this regardless. But it was so nice to have that there um, to sort of see as a point of reference. But really, this is kind of its own beast. Um, it's much more future facing. It's just set in an entirely different world. Um, and it's about, what I love about the show is that I feel like a lot of, you know, as a whole, because it is an anthology, you don't have to watch the previous seasons to understand what's happening in, in the current season. But um, it's about these women who don't really hold anything back and are able to, um, really express themselves in, in areas that are conventionally um, seen as expressed by males on television. And I think what I loved about Iris in particular is, you know, she's greedy. She wants power. She loves money. She likes sex. And um, she's sort of completely unafraid. So I would say that the precedent of the previous shows was nice, but it was mostly the character and Anya's vision that brought me to this one. Yeah, you don't really realise until you watch it how it still is quite rare to see kind of female desire explored like this on on screen. But is, 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 is you, when you when you sort of read the script and stuff, did this, did this feel unique? Did this feel like there's not much else like this at the moment? You know, I think we still have a lot of room to tell um, stories of different types of women. I'm keenly aware that this is a very privileged story about a white woman with. Um, you know, a lot of access and the means to sort of transform her life and to feel safe doing it. And so I think there's, you know, we haven't even, we're at the tip of the iceberg of the female stories that need to be told. But this was particularly exciting for me, yeah, because I still get sent a lot of roles that I feel like are very male gazy. And um, so I definitely feel very spoiled from doing this. 
And one thing I love about the, the the three series is it's and one thing that's kind of remained a constant throughout is this they're so non judgmental of, of of any character in it. I always find how important do you think that is when when telling a story like this. Yeah, I think um, what's cool about this franchise is that I think a common theme is that the pr protagonists and Iris certainly are always. Um, very enigmatic. You never really know what they're thinking or why they're doing what they're doing. And it, in that way, I think this show has a lot of respect for the audience because it doesn't treat them like they need to be um, catered to. There's not a lot of exposition. So really it turns the show around on the audience and is able to ask them um, the questions instead of having uh, you know, too much exposition or anything out on the table. I thought that was, that's what I really like about it. So my final question, I know each kind of series is sort of standalone of their own right, but is this, do you reckon there could be any chance that Iris could be, could be back for more and you'd be back playing her again one day? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I loved playing Iris. I think um, Iris exists very much in her own world. So I would be surprised if we ever saw her again, but you know, I'm always willing uh, but right now I think that season three is going to be very exciting and I, I hope people watch it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so do I. Uh, thank you so much for your time today and best of luck with the release of it and stuff. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.